What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Montana Method Podcast. One more time, as always, your host, Nelson Rodriguez Jr., author and creator of Montana Method, live noon every Friday, coming at you, super consistent. I'm very excited to collaborate with this person here. We've been trying to make this happen for a while. She lives very far. She did a big sacrifice to be here. I appreciate her very much for taking time out of her day to be here. She's a new friend I've made through Cuban Mike. Shout out Cuban Mike. It's my people's up there in Boston. Please welcome Lisette Lavo. Un sacrificio, Dios mío. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. You're welcome. It means a lot. Eli, kick the intro. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Yeah. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. Yeah. When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call. Yeah. I never asked for nothing, no. But now I want it all. Yeah. Yeah. I promise I'ma do it. Came from rags to riches. Yeah. Rags to riches. Came from rags to riches. Yeah. Rags to riches. Came from rags. In Philadelphia, like when they first saw in the country, right? Like I think that was what they thought or were gonna really originally pick as Would like they the do c- flip a quarter. Or? <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know, <laughs> but I read somewhere that it was they were considering one of those two cities to be like the nation's capital before they picked DC, and then it became the Union, and they expanded out west. And all it's that true. I, they used to tell me it was like the old school New York. Mm. Like uh, Lawrence, Massachusetts, was one of the richest cities in New England. Like mm. way before I got there, of course. Of course. Right. When I got there, it was like the poorest city in New England. So. <laughs> it became like the poor. It went from yee to ee. Yeah. Everybody got a job, and now they still working. They still working. That's wild. So there's a large, from what Cuban Mike has told me, there's a large Dominican, Puerto Rican population out there? Yes. Okay. Yes. And your mother's Dominican? Yes. That's cool. I haven't met, that's an interesting mix. I've never met that many. I maybe have met one other Cuban Dominican in my entire life. There's a reason. Yeah. It's the Clash of the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's an interesting way to. My parents, they hate each other. I have, my dad complains about my mom. I'll hang up. My mom should, <sighs> she'll start <laughs> complaining about him. I'm like, I, I can't, I'm that's not a funny. mediator, guys. That's funny. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's hilarious. With divorced parents, the kids end up being mediators sometimes. <laughs> I remember that as a kid. That was funny. Cuban Dominican. So who'd you, when, when did your parents split up? Were they never together? Or? Yeah, they were married. Okay. They had a... So you grew up with both of them in the house? Till I was three. To, not that long, okay. Not that long. I ended up going to foster care. Okay. I was with my mom. And then I went to foster care as a young teenager mm. and then thugged it out and grew up. Did you get emancipated? Um, not really. I was a ward of the state when I was 18. So okay. I graduated high school and then signed up for some programs to help me get some, pay for some college. Mm. Yeah. So you, you lived, so you lived three years with both parents. Then you lived up until your pre, like teenager age with your yeah. mom. I was 14. Um, I kind of went back and forth. So I, okay. I, I have some some time living with my dad. like, And I went to school in Texas until I was 10. And then I went up to Lawrence and have some experience with mm. private schools in Lawrence. And then I went to a vocational school for high school. Uh, so okay. I really like my education. That's cool. Yeah, I like it. You're an interesting person, man. You have yes. like very diverse. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, you, you are because you have such a diverse mix of culture. I mean, yeah. people would just label it as Hispanic, but as you know, Hispanic people can vary. We're very different, right? Um, and then aside from that, you're from such an interesting part of the country. And now, like, all the things you've been involved in, and you're an artist, and now you're a DJ, and you're an interesting... You're like a Renaissance woman. Oh, thank you. That's cool. Wow. Shout out to Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but yeah, that's that's cool. I, I don't think I've met anybody like that. When I was younger, you know? it gave me an identity crisis. Because you, you were into too many things? Well, no, because like I'm born in Texas. Mm. You know, I had that accent. Then I go up north. I get this Cuban experience, and I go up north with my mom. Then I get this Dominican experience, and I like I have a different accent. And then I come back down to Florida, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like coming back out of me now. So, <laughs> uh, Right? Don't you feel, bro, tell me Cubans, no matter where you're from, you come to Miami, and you're like, Wow, I kind of feel at home. <laughs> I felt like that at first. Yeah, yeah. Then it was like a culture shock. 
Oh, yeah. I'm like, wow, my people. And then I was like, my people. (laughs) Yo, yo. Yeah, I know. It's intense. It's very intense. We we can be a bit much. But it's as insane as and as crazy as Miami is. I can I really I can't I can't live anywhere else. I mean, there's ways to I've gauge tried. it. I feel like the more tattoos, the crazier the Cuban. <laughs> so fair just, enough. <laughs> 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 He's like covering her swore. I'm like, no. Um, Go outside in long sleeve. That's funny. Yeah, I know. And there's different eras, right? Because if you're talking about our grandparents, they're like pre pre they knew Cuba before the revolution, and then mm-hmm. they got the whole way communism wave of of all that in '59, and then yeah. they left. So th- those are the Cubans that refused to go back. Yeah, my and, father, you know, my grandfather would never go no, back. No, 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 no. They refused to go back, and they to. would and they would get very angry at people at Cubans who went back. Yeah, like m- my, my grandfather, mm-hmm. borderline, like he didn't speak to me for like two months when I decided to go. As a, as a grown man. Because when I was a kid, whatever, like, they took me. But when I was an adult and I wanted to go back and I went, he, he was very angry at me. Do we very... have the same grandfather? <laughs> That's no, wild. No, Cuban, Cuban seniors are have similar They're traits. They're all the same. They're very similar. They're very similar. And I don't blame them because, you know, they lived through something pretty crazy. They lost their country. It got taken away from them. You mm-hmm. know? I get it. Um, but for me, it was important to go back and see where I'm from, you know? And I haven't I'm, been. I would recommend to at least go and see like where your father's from and you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. I want to go, but it's been hard because my grandmother was only allowed to go once, and I just mm. didn't make it. Mm. So, um, do you know where your dad's from? Um, more or less, I know that they it was like Isla de Pino. Isla de los Pino. Isla de los Pino, and Isla it's now is Isla de la Juventud. De la Juventud, yeah. That's where my grandmother was born, and I think my grandfather was from Oriente. Oriente is like half the country. That's there's like seven provinces, Somewhere over there. but yeah, that's in the Orient. Yeah, on the Orient side. They they that's funny that your your grandfather is from there because they speak like Dominicans. They don't they don't sound like Cubans in the Orient and in the Oriente. That's probably they, what attracted my dad. <laughs> probably, to my mom. probably yeah, because the the cultures, the way they speak, the food, it's similar. And don't even get me started on why the accent is that way in that part of the country or whatever. They even have different words like papaya and mame. They don't say mame. They say sapote. Oh, yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. And I've, is that how Dominicans say it? No. We say papaya. You say But in the in the Oriente, in Cuba, they say, like, they have different words. It's almost like a different country. It really, they, we're, we're all Cuban, but they have, you know, it's, it's very regional. You know, it's, and they're su- they're interesting people. They're very humble, very nice, mm-hmm. um, hardworking, like country folk. They're kind of like the country folk that moved to because Oriente, all of Cuba is destroyed, but Oriente is like going through it. That's they they go so. through it. yeah. So they imagine La Habana's su- like it's terrible living conditions, and they purposely moved to La Habana because of how bad Oriente is. Mm-hmm. And then they live in these things called Kitipon. You ever heard of that? A Kitipon is. Quita y ponlo, like quita, like take it, uh, like put and take away, because it's a shack. They grab wood or or whatever they can find, which most of the time you can't find anything in Cuba because people find like they literally dig through trash to like yeah. build shit, and they make a shack out of like tree branches and sheet metal, and and that's how they have to live because they it, isn't this crazy in in, the, in their own country if they get caught in La Habana they get deported to Oriente. It's like, bro, what the fuck? I'm Cuban. Can you imagine moving to Florida and then the f- state police finding out and you getting deported back to Boston? That'd be crazy, right? That's what they do in Cuba. I've heard. That's wild. I, 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 the method of like making the huts, I feel like my grandfather still used that method to like fix things in the house in Texas. <laughs> I bet. He did. Very resourceful. Extremely. Yo. Like, you know, you just Mickey Mouse it. Straight if up. If you have to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And my grandmother, she's to this day, she still keeps, whenever they finish using a gallon of something, they'll keep it. No, no, okay. Lo puedo usar para esto. <laughs> Probably. I have a closet full of empty gallons. Bro. Because I'm going to grow something in them. Bro. I swear. My grandma's just like, no, no, que puedo usar. Oh, I can use it for something. <laughs> Abuela, you don't need to do that here. There's tons of gallons. You, you'll get a new gallon when you go buy juice at the, you know, they're. She's very traumatized. She was the she was the youngest. No, I'm sorry. She was the oldest of fourteen brothers and sisters. Wow. My my grandfather was the youngest of fourteen brothers. Youngest of fourteen. Look at that. Fourteen brothers. Oh, all boys? Wow. Damn. 
Holy crap. I never heard of that. Extremely masculine. Brothers. That's wild. Yeah, he was aggressive. Well, he was in the war. That was so. your grandfather? Yeah. What? You know what year he was born in? No. Oh, my God. Like, in the it? 40s, right? Something like that. Befo- Befo- you and me are the same age, right? I don't know. My grandfather passed away when he was 92, and he passed oh, away wow. like three years ago. So three, that's 2021. 90, 90 what you said? 92. 92. So he was born in the 30s. Wow. Before that, right? No, in the 30s. Thir- no, in the 30s, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the 30s. Wow. Yes. Yo, are you, re- you, re- you ready for this? He lived through the Great Depression. He lived through the First World War, no, the Second World War, the Vietnam War. He lived through the Cold War. He lived through the fall of the Soviet Union. Think about how many world events your father, your grandfather lived through. He was a train smoker till the day he died. And he died at 90-something. That's crazy. No, he died three like three years ago. That's yeah, wild. 92. Chain smoking, still, yeah. Actually, he stopped the last Tobacco? couple of years. No, like regular like Marlboros. Cigarettes? Oh, okay. Marlboro Reds. Because that's a thing among old Cubans. They live to be 100 and they smoke cigars to the day they die. Mm-hmm. Like tobacco, not, mm-hmm. not, you know what I mean? If you stop smoking, you get sick. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what it is? It's the lifestyle. Since they live out in the country and they work on the farm and shit and they live a really healthy, they eat like really healthy food that's, they make it themselves and it's all supernatural food. The smoking is like not even it doesn't even affect their health. I think because of I think it's that and the fact that like you don't nothing suppressed. They get everything off their chest. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) they keep it a hundred. I love that about. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like that helps. I love that about all Cuban people. (laughs) They they don't like you. They'll be like, oye, mira, coge camino, bro, porque yo no estoy para. You know what I mean? Like I don't can't be around me, dog. You know, move, move it. That's something I loved about both my grandfathers. They kept it 100. Like, su- yo, I remember one time my grandfather was 79 years old, grown ass. I'm talking about he is not in no position to be on no, like, ego trip and trying to check, you know. He's, play- you know, lottery. They love the lottery, right? So he plays the lottery. I take him to Sedano's whenever, because he lived right outside, outside of Tampa. But whenever he would come to Miami, I'd pick him up the train and we'd spend the day together. He'd always want me to take him to play the lottery. So I, I took him to Sedano's to play the lottery. And I'm there. You know how... Have you been to Sedano's? The supermarket? Yeah. Okay. So it's very Cuban. There's a little bakery section. I some bacalao there. <laughs> Fire, right? <laughs> they have they have like hot food, hot Cuban food, but then they have the bakery where you could buy pastelito and coffee and all that stuff. Yeah. But then they have the mini mart counter, which you can buy the scratch-offs. You can buy the lottery. That's super Cuban. Like, I can't even tell you how Cuban that is. You only see that in Miami. Anyway... So they walk in, I walk in, I go to the bakery to buy my my little pan con queso and my, my little cafe con leche, and he goes to buy his his scratch-offs and his lottery. So he's doing the scratch-off, and he's holding, mind you, he had just bought two cans, you know the cans of mango juice? Oh, yeah. The sun cheese? Yeah. Oh, stay so good, bro. Anyway, so he's got them, he's holding them like in a nylon bag, and he's standing in line about to buy a scratch-off, and he looks to his right, and his 19-year-old kid is like, ¿Qué tu mira? What, what you looking at? My grandfather looks back at me, and I'm like, oh, my God, he's about to hit him in the face with the mango <laughs> cans, dog. And he's like, bro, I see, him, I see him raise his hand, and I'm like, abuelo, no. And he's like, ven acá, chico, a quien tú le estás diciendo eso? Like, he's trying to, he's like, bro. <laughs> his mom ran. Ran, I'm talking about his mom ran from like four out. Oh, hey, Chico, get the it. What are you doing talking to that man? He dragged him away and like slapped him on the back of the head. I was like, damn, dog. He was about to get embarrassed in front of everybody, get his face busted open by a 79 year old man. My, my grandfather would have went to jail. C- like, Cuban, Cubans stay strong. <laughs> they straight. The, the coffee just makes you real strong. It so makes you, yeah, 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 yeah. My grandfather, he had dementia, but he had so much energy. He was climbing fences, like jumping what? fences, trying to get Damn. get free. I have an uncle like that. that he's he's not really cognizant, but he's always you got to watch him because he'll walk out into the street yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. My grandfather left in a car and came back with the cops. What? We still don't know where that car went. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild, bro. Did you did you ever live with your grandparents? I did when I was younger in Texas. Yeah, with your Cuban grandparents. Yeah. Okay. So is, that's all right. Now I understand. Is that why you have like the heavy Cuban influence, like culture? Yeah, you, that's why. I I mean, I learned how to make coffee when I was eight, just like everyone else <laughs> in my family. 
All right. Con See? la pumita y todo. See? That, hey, on the stove. Those are good grandparents, right? My there, whole boy. family does it. The, 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 the tradition, you know? I think so, sometimes the, the kids forward. fight. Like, oh, I want to make it. I want to make it. Oh, what? Yes. They had kids fighting over who wanted to make it. It's, it's, it's like pride just to make the Fire. coffee right and everybody enjoys it. Because, you know, as soon as somebody comes over, I get cola cafe. Bro. After you eat, I get cola cafe. Bro, you know what's crazy? Every time I go to a Cuban household and they try to serve me coffee, I'm like, don't make the coffee. I don't drink coffee. And they think I'm saying that because... Who are you? I know. I know, What man. the hell is this? <laughs> I always, I always thought that was weird. Cubans know, that don't drink that cafecito don't, yeah. and Dominicans that don't eat plátano. Explica. Yeah, yeah. That's like you know, that's like Irish people who don't drink beer, whiskey, or or like an Italian that won't eat pasta. Like. What? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's terrible. Or like a white uh, person with bad credit. Jap- like, oh my god! <laughs> no way. <laughs> I was going to say a Japanese person doesn't eat sushi, but that's funny. <laughs> that's really funny. Oh, man. So that makes a lot of sense, though. Now now I know why you're so... Because typically what happens is when a kid is mixed, they, you know, it's not... But that's cool. That's yeah. Really funny. So I went, when I was in... Uh, I noticed, like, the food is different, too. Like, uh, I could never find congri in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Yo. But you will find locrio, moro, when I had asopao. Cu- when I had Cuban Mike on, uh, man, a long time ago, I had him on when it was, when it was audio only. That was like t- two, wow, two years ago. I've been podcasting for two years. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. So Cuban Mike, we, you know, we're all, t- same thing. We're talking about like Cuban being Cuban. And I'm like, man. You don't not, you don't have no jupina, no madeba, no iron. Uh, you don't. You can't even find ropa vieja. <sighs> it's sad. Like there's no cafecito Yo, in Lawrence. Oh, that that that's why I can't live anywhere else. It's it, when I came down here, I was so happy about that. I'm. T- it's in every corner. It's so easily accessible. As soon as you go to Fort Lauderdale, it's gone. And it's fast gone. too. Yeah. Dollar fifty. Yo, here you go. Here's your coffee. That's why I can't leave because I'm so I'm a person that I identify as a Cuban. As much as I identify as American, you know what I mean? It's so embedded into me that I like in my whole neighborhood, no one speaks English. No one. Nobody speaks. Yeah. I go to the gas station. Oh, yeah, I'm going to pay. Give me $20. Yo, Spanish. I live I live in, a, in an uh, apartment and my landlord's my aunt. So I see her every day. So Spanish. She lives with my grandma. Spanish. Everything is Spanish. My whole family lives down here. Nobody speaks English. You know what I mean? So... That alone is the reason some people hear me speak Spanish. I'm like, man, you speak really fluent Spanish. Of course, because it's it's like the national language of Miami. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the independent country of Miami. Exactly. I came this down is, here and I was like, this isn't America. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. No one this, told me. Nah, nah. This is It's not Florida either. This is a colony. <laughs> Dade is its own thing. Yeah, yeah. The independent country of Miami Dade County, hundred percent. I tell everybody, bring your passport. This place is it's another animal. It's, and it's gonna get it's so much different now. They just put the first shovel in for like the first skyscraper being erected mm, in West Brickell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the weekend, the first shovel went in. I'm yeah, like, but that's not that's huge. That, can, can I clarify something though? That's not Brickell is in Miami. Uh, that's that's like the glorified, beautiful version of Miami that everybody thinks. Everybody thinks Brickell is all of Miami. Like everybody thinks Brickell oh, no, is. I know that. No, you know that because you're down here. You're, most. But the world's always like, oh, they but see that, that spot that's Little Havana is gonna be West Brickle. That's a shame, man. I know. That's such a shame. It's changing. Even even the South Beach is changing. Yeah. Well, but yeah, I, no, the good news is terrible. this will be the financial district. This is gonna be New York. It's gonna be the financial. Di- don't look at me like that. The traffic's already screaming New Yo, York. Don't even. Can you not say those two words on this podcast, dog? Please. I pretty kind of appreciate it. Man, that's like that's like Beetlejuice. You say that shit three times. I'm a COVID mover. Of course, I made your traffic worse. <laughs> no, nah, but you're good. You're good. You're good. First off, you're half Cuban, so like yeah, like so. I, you, that's why I feel I don't feel you good. have like a right to be here. When they're like, oh, these COVID <laughs> movers, I'm like, bueno, I'm Cuban. Yeah, so. yeah. So it's like my you know, family's been here. I didn't just move here to enjoy the weather. Yeah, I came yeah, here yeah, to yeah, be yeah. closer to family yeah, too. Definitely. So all right, but speaking of of the pandemic movers. Pandemic movers are different from pre-pandemic movers. Like if you're from up north and you moved down here in 2019 or in 2017, you're a different class of mover. What, why? Like what kind of mover are you? Pandemic movers are wild. Wild. Crazy. So you're blaming us? Not blaming you specifically. Okay, why are they, why are they wild? 
Bruh, are you kidding me? Are I don't know. Serious? I can't tell the difference between a Florida man and a pandemic mover. Educate me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know the news up north is like a Florida man this, a Florida man that. Yeah, because they yeah. hate us. No, it's not because of that. It's because the news is... Because things that happen here don't happen in other places. For example... Right, because we have freedom. Yeah, we made our own freedom. Because <laughs> uh, we can do what we want. Liberta, liberta. That's one thing we do keep identify. And like, yeah, Miami is a different country, but we got freedom. You know what I mean? Uh, some people aren't aware of like how the rest of the country hears about Florida men. Yeah, because so they... One funny thing I like to crazy. do is when you Google your birthday mm. and Florida man, like just the date and Florida man... Something crazy pops up, <laughs> like a bank getting robbed with a taco or somebody, <laughs> somebody throwing an what? alligator through a drive through Just crazy go- stuff. Google yeah. your birthday and Florida man. If you haven't done it yet, you will find something hilarious. <laughs> you doing it? Let us know. Florida man encased himself in the concrete in the governor's mansion. There, there you go. Wow. <laughs> Florida man encased himself in concrete in the governor's wow. mansion. There you go. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just saying, man, if you moved here... It's because you like something about this place. So don't move here and tell me that this should be like where you came from. Because you left where you came from. Because you didn't like what was going on. So if you don't like what's going on over there, don't suggest that we should do it over here. Because you like what we do over here. That's why you moved over here. Or, That's or we I'm just saying. like the weather. Bullshit. I'm if a COVID you, mover. Of course I moved here for the weather and yeah, not the yeah, people. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. you, you moved here because it was wild up north. You couldn't do nothing. You were locked in your house. I couldn't go out. I was tired of it. And Florida was much less strict, and everybody moved down here because we had freedom. Yeah, there was and freedom. That's o- that's okay. I'm not I'm not against you moving here. I'm against you moving here and trying to trying to suggest like we should be like other places. I would never do that. I t- that's all I'm saying. But it, it could I don't be nicer out here. But I would never do that. I would never go to New York and say it should be like Miami. <laughs> no, I would never go to Los Angeles and say it should be like Miami. I live in Miami. Miami should be like Miami. Los Angeles can do whatever it wants. Miami will make you mature. It will real it will, quick. It will cause you to grow up real quick. Especially, I know the people here grew up so fast, and I didn't have like the experiences I had here anywhere mm. else. And I've been a lot of places, so I could say like in the past two and a half years that I've lived here, I have matured in so many different areas that I didn't realize I needed maturing in, mm. and. It, it, it you know growing pains yeah it's a hurtful experience 100%. but you have to you have to know what that is a lot of people yeah. would retreat and go back home i had friends that tried moving down here and then would move back because it's too hard mm. um mentally you know financially spiritually if you stick through it though a great version of you comes out the other side a very like a better version than you ever thought possible speaking of the other side so they say, like, Miami chews you up and spits you out. I'm like, just get swallowed whole in the belly of the beast. So this other side you speak of, mm. right through the belly. There you go. I'm telling you. It's rough and it, it's painful, especially if you don't have nobody down here. Like, if you come down on your own, it's rough. And now... Which I did. Yeah, no, and now, because of inflation and all the people that moved down here, it's it's, it's the city's the most expensive it's ever been. Yeah. So I it's get in my it. DNA to deal with it. That's all I'm saying. I, said, man, I, mean? I was like, there's no way I'm going to retreat. I know my friends did, but they weren't Cuban. So, <laughs> Hey, shout I'm, out. I'm like, I'm used to the resingeria, so <laughs> whatever. You're funny because you have like a slight Cuban accent or a slight Dominican so accent. so Dominican. Slight Dominican accent when you speak Spanish, but you say all the bad words in Cuban. Like, like a Cuban. <laughs> That's awesome. Straight up. Straight Everything up. else is so Dominican. For real. All right, so... Lightning round for food. Ready? Lightning round? Yeah. Okay. Carne con papa or fufu? Fufu. Ah, uh, come on. Dog. All right. Well, because I'm Dominican. Yeah, so but I you're want also mangu. Cuban. So and fufu is mango. Yeah. And I love that. <laughs> and I, I make it the fufu way. Like you leave the peel on. That's pretty That's fire. A, I do it the Cuban way. That's super so, fire. I don't, sorry. Sorry, DR. <laughs> All right. Fairy Cuban dish. I mean... I really love the way my grandmother made garbanzo. Oh, my God. She made it so... For those of you that don't speak Spanish, it's a chickpeas. Yeah, she made But our it, chickpeas are better she, than yours. She made a garbanzo frito, but it, it still had, like, a good amount of, like, salsita and oil in it. With a little sausage. Just a little. Oh, my God. Um, No, I think she used tocino, like, the bacon. Yeah, a little... Yeah, oh, my God. That's how she starts Super the black fire. beans, too. It was so thick, you could eat it like a soup. 
You know, just oh like that. Because some people make it dry. No, but they but make it like a chowder. Yeah. My, oh. my grandma made it like, you know. Fire, bro. Nice. Like, shout out to Abuelas. One, one time, she took one of those. You know how like all Spanish people use those the tin cookie case? The, the tin cookie thing? It's round. The the blue ones? The blue ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they called? I don't know. I just know the Maria cookies maybe? Yeah, they're know. like the sugar cookies. She put <laughs> arroz con dulce in there because I loved her arroz con dulce with the cinnamon. Yeah. Arroz, arroz, arroz con, con leche. leche. Arroz con leche. And she taped it and mailed it to me. That's wow. how much her food meant to me. Wow. Because nobody did it up north the way like Yo. she did it. I'm about to drive, bro. I wish. Like I'll pick, I'll pick a Dominican flan over a Cuban flan. But I've never I'll had pick Dominican a Cuban arroz con leche over a over, Dominican yeah. arroz con leche. Yeah, I've never had Dominican flan. What's it like? Oh my, it's custardy and creamy, D- delicious, and just amazing. Diabetic, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's a ball of diabetes. Yeah, you know, like Dominican ladies with the the, the thick arm right here. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's down. from. That's when you know it's coming out good. <laughs> I want that lady's flan. <laughs> That's funny. Doña, no. guardame that un pedazo. That is so funny. Oh, my God. Um, all right. So what, What? so you said our arroz con leche is better, their flan is better. What else? Compare some more dishes. What's better, Dominican? What's better for Cubans? Well, if you want variety, I think, like, Dominicans do more variety when it comes to using their rice and their platanos because hmm. Dominicans have uh, your, your moro, which is the rice and gandule, or kidney bean, whatever. Moro for us is, is congri. That's what we call it. That's the only one. But we use all different types of beans. Oh, okay. Right? Then there's the locrio, like when you do the rice with meat in it. Then there's the asopao, and it's like a little watery. So like those three different ways, and it's in the same pot. And Dominicans eat rice with everything. Like they'll eat pasta mm-hmm. and they'll have a side of rice. El arroz sagrado. <laughs> I can't. Nah, yo, they, I'm not kidding. They eat mm-hmm. a plate of rice with mm-hmm. the pasta. Like en una montaña de arroz, así. I can't. I haven't eaten carbs in three weeks. That's like Jesus. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. True, true. Mm-hmm. It makes me happy. Though. That's that's our soul food. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. love it. No, nah, that's why I can't. Again, that's why I can't move. Like Cuban food for me, not being able to pull up somewhere and order anything, you know, un, un bistec de palomilla or or whatever, whatever, un carne con papa, un arroz imperial, dog. Ropa vieja, shredded beef. I love ropa vieja. Yo. Yo. I make, I make it. It's so good. It's like... You got to make me a meal one of these days. I'm going to. I'm starting something at my house where I'm interviewing people, but I'm starting it off with just... You came a, to see me? I'll come to see you. Giving a dish of food and the that's, interview starts off you eating it and telling dope. me what you think. So that's that's what I'm going to have to make for you, a Cuban that, dish. Hey, consider it done. You came down to see me. I'll come up to see you anytime. Nice. See? I look out. I see. I see. <laughs> so, the uh, segue. Um, even though I love I love talking about culture is like one of my favorite co- topics of conversation. So, I know you you're in, like I like I said before, you're very versatile. You're into comedy, you're into music, you're a musician, you're a singer. Now you're a DJ. That's really cool. Yeah, but, I think everything I did in life just helped me be like effortlessly be a DJ because mm. um, I play the piano, so it's easy for and do music. I have so many years of experience with music, so just understanding music and knowing music was a leg up. And then I've been to school for programming, mm. and then you mix just doing the piano. You you're using your fingers, so you just know how to move fast, right? Mm. You put all that together, and the fact that I've I've used different programs to record my vocals. When I saw Serato. I was like, easy. Mm. It was so easy. So everybody who has tried to train me is like, oh, my God. Like, I've shown guys this, and they don't pick it up so, like, fast enough. But it's because, like, everything I've done is just just made me ready for it. Mm. So at the moment, like, I have different people come over while I'm practicing, and they'll stay there till 4 in the morning, and I won't even realize it's been four hours, and I'm just mixing for four hours. And they're not leaving. And sometimes I even forget to give them water. You know, but like the vibe is good. It's just dope mixing. Recently, I saw an episode of the the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. And he had, you know who Chris Williamson is? You ever heard of him? He has a podcast called Modern Wisdom. I don't think. 
It's the only podcast recorded. I think he uses Komodos to record. Like it's super high definition. It looks like a movie. He's had the biggest guys. He's Chris had Williams. Chris Williams, and he's like a British guy. Um, his podcast is great. I recommend it. It's called Modern Wisdom. Anyway, he goes on Joe Rogan's podcast and he says, "I from the bot like I enjoy seeing people doing what they enjoy to do, like watching other people." live in in that passion and do what they love i didn't know i was gonna love it that's amazing a few people was like why don't you just dj why don't you just dj because i was opening i've done so many shows like up north and here in south florida and not getting paid Mm. like when you're a rapper without a following if you don't have like a good business plan it's really hard to get paid to do shows but as a dj it's it's a little easier to easier. to ask for that um, so a few people at first I was like, I don't want to be a DJ. I've already bought all this equipment to do this and that, and I've already learned everything. And then another person told me and another person told me and I got, I ended, I was like, fine, I'll just do it. Like you, the universe is telling me that I have to do this. Mm. All the signs are pointing to it. Right. So I, I gave in and did it. I'm like, whatever, it's going to make me a better producer at the end of the day because, 100%. and instead of begging DJs to break my record, I can just do it for myself eventually. Um, And so I bought a turntable. My friend hired me for three weddings in Rhode Island. So now I have like all this uh, experience with lighting and how to run a a wedding really smoothly from beginning to end. I told him to treat me like an intern. Mm. I'm like, I'm gonna carry everything, don't lift a finger. Let me just set up this whole wedding. Mm. So I did that all weekend and I did it quicker. Again, he's like, you move quicker than some guys. I'm like, it's the cafecito. They don't understand what Bustelo does to you. They're like, how does she do it? I'm like, that's my secret. Bustelo. They're just, it's crack. Uh, you know how like they, it's, they give it to you in bricks? Like they it's package like a kilo their cocaine. cocaine. Straight up. They package their cocaine. I never made that connection. How do you know they don't put cocaine in Yo, that? Yo, it's I'd be Cuban and I don't coffee get any. Like, is packaged like a, ki- a brick. That's crazy. Message. I, d- damn. Message. <laughs> Message. I think the coffee is right next to the cocaine. <laughs> like the wind is blowing into it a little I bit. I mean, if it's Colombian coffee, that's for sure. Definitely the coke, the wind. My from eyes like, get dilated when I drink it. The wind hits the mountain, and that's where they're mixing all the coke. That's what I'm so saying. it comes down and it spreads all over the coke, the, the coffee to, leaves. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's my theory. <laughs> that's what makes it so strong. That makes sense. I think it really is happening. That makes sense. So question oh yeah but i wanted to tell you real quick yeah yeah so i i bought this equipment and i i had people supporting it long story short i got seventy thousand files of music wow my like the week that i bought my my turntable and i mean it's taken people like 15 years to collect that much music right but because the universe wanted it for me and it was in my energy to do it already i just went full throttle Mm. And like everything just came easily. Just came together easily. I want to say easily, but not really because everything like, fell into place. It fell into place, yeah. but obviously my whole life prepared me for it. So mm. I, I was able to sustain it when I, when I was there. I was able to sustain seventy thousand records because I was already, I already had the, mm. the hard drive that was one terabyte, and the laptop because I was doing the music anyways. So. Right. Yeah. There's something about letting the world just take his natural course yeah when you're like jesus grab the wheel something like that mm-hmm. i mean and then divine intervention comes in and people are telling you like go down this path because sometimes you can't see it and they'll send you people to point point down I, the path i'm a person that's had to work really hard to to accomplish things we all do and at the same time i've noticed that there's many things that came into play in those situations that were out of my control mm-hmm. that i could have never like, it wasn't up to me for that to happen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Great example is the studio. Like, the way this came together was... Cr- I was I was spending a lot of money at another studio. But I, I'm a person that... I, I, I always bet on me. Like, I don't I don't hesitate to invest in myself and in my craft. Never. Yeah. Even if I don't have the money, I'll, I'll throw that shit on a credit card. I'll figure out how to play it later. That's how I am. I, I'm ne- I always bet on me. And then... I end up interviewing my, the CEO of of this company, and he was so impressed. He was like, "Yo, oh, come! I want you to come do this for me." And I didn't take him seriously, 
But then other people were like, bro, we could all do this together. Like, for real. Good. Like, t- keep talking to him about it. And then he, he opened the studio and he's letting me be a part of it. Yeah, when so, it's meant for you, they'll just keep knocking to you. That, that happened completely organically. Mm-hmm. I haven't, another, another great example. You don't think you manifested that? No, 100% I did. Okay, but cool. I have to. I have to also be cognizant of the fact that I didn't I didn't go out of my way to make this happen. This just happened. It all came together perfectly. Another great example is we have four podcasts that, and it's about to be seven. We have two more coming on three more coming on board that record out of the studio that pay like this is a business now. It makes money. I didn't call those people to tell them to come record here. They hit me up, Nelson, I saw you have a studio. Ah I wanna come and work with you. Okay, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, there's something, I don't, I don't know what it is, whether you want to call it God or you want to call it divine energy, you want to call it the universe. I'm fine with whatever you want to call it. I, I'm totally in, in alignment with anything except atheism because that's just, from my point of view, that's just human arrogance. But anyway, whatever you want to call it, once you accept the fact that things are not in your control and control is an illusion, Things fall into place. I'm telling you, the day I adopted that thought, the day I became conscious of the fact that control is a joke. It is. You cannot control anything. You can't. Nothing. You can ask for things and receive them, but you can't control how you're going to get them. (sighs) Bro. Like, you might think something bad is happening to you, but it's literally something you manifested, and this has to happen. Like, one example of that is if you reverse... A few months ago, how I was like at a really low place. Um, well, I had manifested wanting to write some of the greatest music that I possibly could. Mm. And if I if I don't go down that low, then I can't reach into like my pain and my fear to write those records. Does mm. that make sense? Of course. I'm like, so sometimes people are like, why is this happening? And you just really have to sit back and think about what path is being opened for mm. you, whether it's in your mind or outside of the world. I can relate completely because that's that's part of what happened with me. I left, so I have I did a, a five-month prison sentence last uh, last year. I thought it was longer. Yeah, I know. I, it's you're you're going to tell me I'm the one that the went? Way, you made it sound <laughs> like you... I, the, I, the way you said... The way I heard it before, if I, it's, I thought it was years. I thought you were gone for like five no, years. No, no, five months, five months. Oh, okay. But... um. The per- that Nelson that came out of those gates is not the, s- the same person. Oh, that- man, five months without having to worry about bills. How was that? <laughs> That's one perspective. Also, five months. That's mo- how you manifest. You got to look at right. the bright, the silver lining. Well, I definitely I definitely worked on me in there. I can tell you that much. Yeah. Like the, I, the, the amount of per- personal work you can get done is, is uncanny in five months because you literally are forced to be away from the world. It's a retreat. <laughs> I guess from the right perspective. So I, you know, I did yoga. I read a lot. I exercised. I read 31 books in five months. Like I was working on me. And I I think to be real with you, I'm probably five years farther ahead in life because of those five months. Yeah. There's a saying, what does that say? A setback is a setup for a a comeback. A comeback. hundred percent. It was more like a slingshot. You know how you, you have to grab a slingshot and keep pulling it back for momentum, for force. And then once you let go, it's your so much. That's that's exactly what happened to me. I feel that. For sure. I feel that. And for me, I remember the day I had that thought in there. It was it was very quiet. It must have been 8 in the morning. I went outside, and there, it was so quiet. Like, all you could hear is kind of like a light breeze and some birds chirping. It was... The, the it was a, a prison camp in the middle of basically in those sticks in Ocala, like way out mm. uh, way out in uh, like forty five minutes west of Orlando. So it was, yeah. it was in the sticks in the woods. So we would get turkeys and the wild hogs walk onto the compound. It was it was in the middle of nature. It was very beautiful. Delicious. Okay. Turkeys <laughs> and hogs. I mean, so is that not Thanksgiving? A Spanish yeah, Thanksgiving? Yeah, it's pretty fire. Um. So. I'd go out, this was like January, so it was still cold. I'd go out, it'd be freezing, but it was nice. Nice breeze and the sunrise. And I was so present to everything mm-hmm. around me. I could hear everything. I could see the animals in the distance, the, I, I, the water, 
there was this nice little stream. They had this this Indian burial ground or like Indian worship area or whatever. Mm. And it had this like this little fountain so you could hear the water running. Mm. And I, I had the thought like, wow, this is being present. Yeah. I've never been this present in my life. Yeah. Uh, off the grid. Off the grid, away from the cell phone. Unplugged. Away from TV, away mm-hmm. from the insanity, away from a, a nine to five, some boss you fucking hate telling you what to do every day. And I was like, wow, did I would like to stay in this state of mind, just being present to my life. You know what I mean? And I understood that that's the only thing you can control. That is the only thing, staying present. You can't control anything else, nothing. You can control staying, pre- being very present. I heard something the other day that that uh, a friend of ours, Nick, told us. Uh, uh, it was genius. He said, my father told me something a long time ago. The only thing you can control is your reaction. It's true. But y- y- pre- preparation helps you with that. Like uh, preparation for different scenarios will right. help you m- maneuver through all those challenges. But ultimately, you still can't control the outcome. No preparation but is part of your reaction. It's how it's, you're reacting it's to. Important to be right? prepared. You don't yeah, even hun- know sometimes what the preparation is for certain things that haven't happened to you yet because they haven't happened. For sure. So, but preparation is still a part of getting your of your reaction of how you're choosing to react to a situation. That is the and stay, staying present is the same thing. It's your reaction, choosing to stay present in the in the present moment, and letting everything else go. That is literally the only thing you can control. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give you another thought I had in there that just, like, I realized, and I was like, wow. What is what humans resist the most in... in change. There you go. They hate change. They resist it at all costs. The sun rises and sets every day. Changes. The moon comes and goes every day. Changes. The stars, we only see them at night change the clouds the 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 sea tide the wind Mm -hmm. everything about this physical place we live in changes every day it never stays the same people die the people in your life come and go everything changes cat williams they they asked him a question uh what's the worst advice you ever got and he said don't ever change (laughs) i was like that's hard yeah bro because you have to, you have no choice. You're not mm-hmm. the same person you were a year ago. You're changing whether you want to or not. Yeah. You, well, you, you should change. Some people are very stubborn at stay, and you can tell like people who don't like evolve they, get very they'll, sad. They'll, they'll get go very extinct. Depressed. Are very yeah. low. Your soul dies. Energy. If you're not growing, you're dying. Hundred percent. So, I took it a step further, and I said, "All right, so change is inevitable." Mm -hmm. You can't stop change no matter what. Mm -hmm. It's literally the only constant. Like, we want to avoid... But change is happening. The only constant and the only thing that will always happen is change. Mm -hmm. No matter what. That's the only thing you can depend on for sure. You can bet money that things are going to change. So, instead of resisting change and being... (sighs) You know, and then all right, end up like a dinosaur. You'll be a fossil. With it, I just started seeing life differently. I used to see life as this struggle, and I got to fight to win. And it's like, no, what if life is more like a river? It is. Let it flow. Mm -hmm. Go with the current. Let it take you where it wants to take you, Mm -hmm. and you'll win. Yeah, that's why DJing was with the flow. It Mm. was part of my evolution. Everything I like. Why wouldn't I do that? Mm. It's a lot of fun too. I really didn't think I was going to get it so fast and love it so much. Mm. That's awesome. It kicks ass. I love it. I have so much respect for the DJs out there. That's really cool. They're musical engineers. That's dope. Are you also going to produce, like make original music? I have. I have done it. Yeah. that's. I mean, I started off doing that. Spin your own I, songs? I have a lot of uh, original music. Um, but DJing is going to help me. It helps me like make mix live mixes. So if I perform at a show, I don't have to hire anyone else to do that anymore. You can do it yourself? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And I always heard blends in my ear. Mm. Like, my whole life. I'm like, those songs would blend good together. I just naturally thought that. So there, I'm a- just doing it left and right now. Satisfying that those thoughts I had. 
like I never executed them. So now I'm like, oh yeah, I get to hear it, I get to mix it. There's actually listen. There's an art. That's an art form for sure. <laughs> Lately, over the past couple of months, we've been working and been listening to different mixes that people, and some of the mixes we've heard here are pretty. There's this uh, what's the DJ from London? The girl, I forgot her name. Um, she did a mix in the boiler room, and we were like, yeah. And then we we saw this this other one of this other ugh, the, the dude I forgot. It's it's an art for sure. Like blending all this different music, putting it together, fusing it in different ways mm -hmm. you've never heard before. It, DJing is definitely an art form. I mean, people like Tiesto and Calvin Harris and those guys. You know, they're rich. They're come out, literally the highest paid DJs in the world. Making tens of millions. There's a reason they get paid that much money because w w once you get that good at your art form, you know what I mean. It's one thing I can't wait to do. I've always wanted to like, like I could e easily just perform my songs too mm. while I'm DJing. So that's another thing. Just plug my own live performance in. That'd be just cool. Just sneak it in there. That's an interesting concept. I have, I don't think there's too many females that actually DJ and rap. I don't like, and I, I don't, don't think I, I don't. I, I can't will, name one. I will tell you this: when I do my live performance, there is no backing track. Mm. Like my vocals are always raw, and I see a lot of men and women that don't do that. But I always get praised for it after a show. Like, wow! I never think think I'm gonna sound good with just my raw vocals, mm. but I, my voice just projects. I was one of those people that always got in trouble for talking in school, right. even if it wasn't me, because my voice just has so much bass in it. You know, you can just hear it. Everywhere. Dope. Mm -hmm. Fire. Okay. B bass, really? Like yeah, I have bass. So even even the microphone I have at um, my house to record with, it... It picks up like the lower lower yeah. decibels? I'm a contralto. I mean, I could do a falsetto, but I'm like um, Tony Braxton. I can ch challenge myself and go higher, but I can go as low as she goes. That's cool. Yeah. Tony Braxton. Mm -hmm. Music is pretty far. I'm such a 90s kid. Keeps, I mean, oh. It keeps me from being abducted. Like when they're like, when I'm in the Uber <laughs> and they're like, do you have a girl, a boyfriend? And I'm like, I'm a man. Oh my God. So <laughs> I'm safe. I'm getting home. I'm not getting snatched. That was fucking scary. Soy hombre. Damn, son. <laughs> you ain't kidding. You got hell boys in that voice. When he likes deep conversations. What are your interests and hobbies? <laughs> You sound like Leila Hermosi. You know who that is? Nah. Nah? You know Alex Hermosi? Damn, son. Well, anyway. Who are these people? Up. They're they're like super successful. I don't know. I've been watching too couple. much. I've been watching too much news, like the election. I just been watching Trump and I just uh, I don't, I don't I'm, I'm, fuck, I'm keeping my eye I'm a on convicted China felon, so I can't vote anyway. I'm keeping my eye on the weather everywhere. And I'm keeping my eye on Diddy because mm, I think plenty <laughs> of people got their eye on Diddy now. Seeing what he's up to, you know, but that was a given. Even before you had social media and everybody found out, and it was like, "Yo, you can't hide," bro. People were still talking about, "Oh, did he kill Pac? Did he kill Biggie? Whatever." It was already a rumor on the street, and even though at the time I didn't believe it, no, it's before way past it was a that rumor, now. and I was just a teenager. That's what I believed. I'm like, I mean, it makes sense. why wouldn't he? I mean. It did make too much sense. It, it does make sense. He'd yeah. be the one benefiting the most. Pretty much. From both situations in a way. Yeah. No, and then you always heard, I mean, hip-hop and music and the music industry is always wild, right? So you always hear those crazy stories. And it kind of makes sense now because you always heard, and did with Diddy specifically, you always heard, oh, this little rumor and that and that. And now it's just all good floodgates finally, you know? Somebody commented, did he do it? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> What about that whole thing with Cassie? That ended quickly. He sold that out court. He's like, yo, here you go. She should have stayed with Brian Leslie. Yo, I'm a diamond yeah. girl. He he was lit. Brian Leslie, you mean? That's what I said. He said Brian. <laughs> he had no, that. Brian. No, Ay, disculpa. Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> he made, uh, I remember I discovered him in college. Somebody showed me this video, YouTube video of that. It, was, it went viral back then before we didn't have like Instagram and all that stuff, but it was a YouTube video that went super viral, and it was a video of him making. I know you're gonna say that the song, the beat right there, boom. Yeah, um, he was one of the addicted. first. Addicted 
to do it right in front of everybody yeah, so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. He made the whole beat. He spent the whole night making it. And the next day the song was done. It was it, it was a really good song too. It was him and Fabulous and Cassie. They, yeah. It was Addicted. Um, <laughs> I am addicted to you. Yeah, yeah, what a good song. He should just keep doing it. He's so good. No, he's very talented. Yeah, yeah. Very talented. Incredible writer. You know he went to Harvard? I didn't know he... I, he didn't go to Berkeley. He went to Harvard. I'm pretty sure he went to Harvard. Yeah. What did he study? I don't remember, but I remember he he went to Harvard and he that he was very like stays up late, like kind of those manic genius type things, like where they don't sleep much and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I went to Harvard. Oh. I went to Harvard. I parked the car there. <laughs> Park your car here. Everyone's like, "You're from Massachusetts. How come you don't talk like them?" I'm like, "I'm Latina. We roll our R's." There you go. And then it's the, the opposite. They always ask me, like, what do people do with the R's? The, the redneck stole them. Well, then no, we get a tomato. It's a, you know? Exactly. It's a yeah. conservative state. They put it on the end of pizza <laughs> and soda and all that. I'm telling you. That's not the first time I've said that. I think you stole my joke. I said it to you before. No, no. I swear <laughs> I, that came off. I got that from a, from a comedian, like, I don't know how long, like 15 years I ago. I thought I made that up. <laughs> nah, hey, listen. I give credit where credit's due. But yeah, that's... I, I made that same observation. So it's funny that you're talking about... Uh, yo, I admire a good accent. Even I, even if it's I not attractive. I have a lot attractive. of accents. Yeah, I did. Yo, I, I used to watch Comedy Central day and night as a kid, so I can... I have a Russian accent. You have a good Russian accent. You Just like in vodka. case, darling. Just in case. Mm -hmm. We can get married, but first let me check insurance policy. Yeah. Must protect family. Life insurance. Very Life important. insurance policy. Protect your children. That's pretty good. Look at mm -hmm. that. That's good. I can bust out the only the one that, that gets a little tricky for me. I confuse like Jamaican and Eng and the British accent. That, that, that I can confuse those sometimes. You know. Bombay clot. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I, I've tried. I've just tried. Drop a blood clot in here. Just blood clot. Yo, Shotters was a fire movie. It, I, what did, a good I just rewatched it like such a classic. two months ago. Kimani Marley. He's my favorite Marley brother. And I was sure. like, Khaled, Khaled looks so different there. Are you kidding I'm me? I'm just like, it's, that's not him. What about Wyclef John? I know. Right? Yep, yep. And then you had, uh, rest in peace, uh, Louis Rankin, uh, Teddy Bruckshot. He, he died a few years ago. Oh. But yeah, no, that's a classic. And it's funny, I didn't even know who Kimani Marley was before that movie. You know who he is? Obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I could, he, I could tell he was a Marley. Uh, I can tell who I the mean, Marley is. Even right? when I hear their music, like when YG came out with his uh, Praise Allah in the Moonlight, uh, Praise John in the Moonlight, I was like, that's a Marley. I could hear it. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, and he grew up in Miami, so there's like a, a Miami vibe to his music too. It's reggae, but it's reggae fusion. You know, it's dope. Mm. I love his music. You know that album, that, he, that album Radio? Oh my gosh, what a good album. I haven't heard it, no. Oof. Listen to it. There's Radio. A, yeah. Super fire. The whole album. I, you can listen to the album front to back. You can't not skip it. Download it. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Go check it out on Spotify. So the set. Thank you so much for coming. That's it? I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been an hour. Oh my Believe God. That? It's crazy. I had a manifestation speech and everything. But all right, all right. Well, I mean, we still got time. You want to say it? I do, because I think it's important. I don't think everybody knows how to manifest. I think it's, it's cool if we talk about ourselves manifesting, but not everybody knows how to do that. And... You can watch a hundred videos online, but sometimes it's still not being explained like how to get into that frequency. I've noticed a lot of people can mm. do it naturally. Some people are so Super lost. important, yeah. I mean, honestly, when they say think positive, it's like, what does that mean? What if you're having a bad day and you just can't think positive? How do you switch it, you know? No, but bad days are bullshit. The only, the only difference between a good day and a it's, bad day is your not, attitude. It's not, it's not bullshit. But you have to know how to get, that, how to maneuver it. Wait, wait. But that goes back to what we talked about. You remember how you said, oh, you could think it's, oh, this super bad thing. And then that thing is what leads to, some, you know what I mean? One, one thing about my teachings I noticed is that words really matter. Like, for example, I spoke to a, a lady the other day that said that she just wants a relationship where, you know, it, when times get tough, that the guy, like, really works on dugging out dugging out the hard times and getting yeah. through those tough conversations. She's like, because I believe a relationship is a perfect storm. And she kept saying perfect storm, and she even grabbed the air like that. So she's holding on to this idea physically and verbally and mentally of this perfect storm. Mm. And I don't. I know the word perfect is nice, but the word storm isn't. And in my house, Correct. you better not come with that rain. 
Yeah, like yeah. I'm not trying to have a storm in my life, in my business. You don't want a perfect storm. And she's like, yeah, but we're not perfect. I'm like, so you're just manifesting problems left and right, I'm telling her. I'm like, it sounds like you are aware that there might be challenges in a relationship, but I think what she meant to say, and I asked her to adopt this new saying, is a perfect understanding. Mm. Because because you might want, you might think like, oh, a relationship's a perfect storm. But then the person you're trying to align with does not have that belief. Right. They want peace and nurturing in this relationship, and you're offering them this perfect storm. So she was literally manifesting exactly what she wanted in every relationship. She would get this, you know, argument she would be abrasive not really hear the other person's point of view i could tell because she was doing it to me i couldn't get through one sentence right without being cut off and i'm like this is your problem she's like yeah i am abrasive i'm abrasive i'm like because you keep conjuring your perfect storm mm. i mean like, you got to stop speaking perfect storm she's like yeah but you're taking it the wrong way i'm like it's not me this is not for me i'm like universe does not care the vibrations do not care how i'm taking it you're you're cursing yourself she's like well i don't really think i'm cursing myself i'm like you don't have to think that you're doing it i know you're doing it because you just told me all your relationships end the same way and you told me how you're how you're summons and summonsing the relationship by saying perfect storm mm. i'm like what happens after it rains the rain clears up and everything gets washed away so right after that last argument he's gone he's gone mm. that's exactly what's going to happen after the storm words are important what all I'm they're, saying they're is everything. No, of course. Uh, words are important, what, but what I'm saying is our perspective of what happens to us in our life is always skewed. It's never right because we check check this out, right? So we see th I'm looking at this microphone. Right? This is all I can see. But if all I did was get up and stand at the door, I I don't just see the microphone. Now I see the whole studio. Now I see how the microphone works. Now I see what goes into... You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's the same thing in life. Like People have a skewed perspective of it because they they just see what's happening in the moment. They don't see that, oh, I got a flat tire. Oh my God, my day's ruined. I can't make it to this meeting. Maybe you were going to crash into somebody and die. You know what I mean? And that flat tire stopped you from getting on the highway. Or... I mean, I could show, I could use a million different examples, or it could be something really positive. How about this? You have a flat tire. Someone comes, helps you change the tire. Oh, that guy finds out you're a DJ. He hires you, and then he pays you like $10,000 for a gig or something. Things like that happen. So you can only focus on what's happening in the moment. I'm waiting it, for it. Not the flat tire, but the offer. <laughs> but we're also manifesting 24 7, even whether, whether we're trying to or not. And we, we're constantly making this reality either you know 10% more positive or 10% more, more negative, negative for ourselves and one another and so words are so important and questions are so important and your intention is so important for us and everybody else and one thing i want to like give an example of is when you go down brickle and you got these like tick uh tiktokers or youtubers stopping and interviewing people on the mm -hmm. sidewalk and they ask a question like what's one race you wouldn't date well that's not a brilliant question and it's never going to lead to a brilliant answer uh the answer you're going to get no matter what the answer is is going to be an answer that promotes hatred because i wouldn't date this race it's just now you're like shining a negative light on a certain culture or race and it's it's coming off hateful or racist so th that's that's manifesting a lot of negativity in this world just by asking that question even if they're just trying to get some views and put some money in their pocket. Yeah, I and I think it. just we can manifest a more positive life for ourselves and others if we ask more important questions. Questions are important, definitely. It, it's just we just really have to be conscious of stuff like that. And that's that's something I wanted to really say because I do feel like I was put on this earth to preach. And um, I wanted to teach a little bit about like uh, what the energy and the frequency of manifestation is. It's, it has a lot to do with uh, a Taurus, a toroid, which is like energy going in and down and out and around. It's kind of mm. like donut shaped. And that's like what the whole world vibrates on. We're, we're doing it constantly. And that's it, you know, letting things in and out. Right. Um, and it's a gym, it's a sacred shape of geometry. And like you have to harness that energy and really like envision it to make that frequency grow mm. and understand that it's all. Um, 
uh, physics. Mm. At the end of the day, it's 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 you, you it's actually scientifically proven. One hundred percent. Yeah, but it starts with your thoughts, though. It doesn't even start. It does. People think it's. Oh. I think it starts with your speech. I think that your speech can condition the way you, you think, but so, the way you think determines how you talk. But you have to hear yourself saying it. So when she's saying "perfect storm," so you hear that she's not correcting herself. Someone has to say, "Change your speech. Say perfect understanding." Now your brain is uh, uh, learning something else. You 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 taught yourself perfect storm. Now you're retraining yourself to to perfect understanding. And just by saying perfect understanding, you're resonating higher. Mm. Uh, another thing is like when someone asks you a question. And I've practiced with this with other people, and you answer right away. Sometimes your first answer or your quick answer is the lowest vibration. Um, I often like advise people to think about their third answer, like not your first answer, not your second, but your third answer, because that one's gonna resonate even higher. It's gonna be even more positive mm. thought. Even your questions, think about the third question you might ask, because the first one is probably. Resonating really low. So think of this, right? That light, this my whatever example, your phone, that water bottle. All these things started as thoughts in someone's mind. Everything you can imagine, whether it's a relationship, your child, a job you have, whatever, it started off as a thought, right? That's why, and again, this isn't even my conclusion. This is what I've, I've read in books and what I've learned, it has to start with the thought because the thought is already a thing. You, even though you can't physically touch it, you know what I mean? You, don't, you can't grab it. That doesn't, that, you can't grab the air. That doesn't mean the air isn't real, right? So being conscious of what the way you think and what comes out of here is super important. It's hard to do that without hearing yourself speak. That's why like, even in the Bible, they say it's like everything started with the word. I'm sure there was yeah, an idea, yeah. but the word made it real. Yeah, you're right. You're you know, right. so that's why I say like manifestation has a lot to do with your words. You you can't fix your thoughts without hearing yourself speak and correcting your speech. Mm. You can't. So, yeah, everything does start in there. But if if you don't correct it in your speech, you won't fix it in your head, if that right. makes sense. Right, right, right. You, if you, you're thinking about it and you're not sharing your thoughts with people, that's why they say, oh, you got to talk about your problems because someone has to fix the thought, the, the way you're speaking. Right. Because that's going to train your brain to think differently. Exactly. And if you don't ever speak, no one will know what you're thinking. You won't fix those things. You could get really sick mm. or just misguide yourself. Right. No, speech is very important. Words are definitely powerful. It's it's the magic. And it's funny that you brought that up because I said that on another podcast. I said, what does the Bible say? It, it, it started, you know, first there was the word. It's the magic. And yeah. the, the voice has sound. Before we spoke words, like the vo the vocal cords made vibrations. I mean, we used to pick up heavy things with it. <clears throat> so the harder you make that sound, like, you know, the stronger you become. Like, mm. try to pick up something really heavy and go, ah. It's just, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. What she did that? Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a Christian, Period. but the Bi the Bible has so many, like, there's so much wisdom in the Bible. So many gems, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Old wisdom. I, I love Proverbs because it talks about the power of the tongue and how it can build and destroy. You know, mm. so I I really do believe that the magic is in the words because that same person said she was dabbling in spirituality. Spirituality, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, let me stop you right there. I'm like, please don't ever say the word dabble when you're st speaking on spirituality. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, well, you're you're taking it the wrong way once again. And I'm like, no. Would you want someone to dabble in your life? Do you want like, mm. do you want, you don't dabble in your career, like you commit to these things. So we, we agreed and settled on patiently exploring mm. her spirituality. Cause I just feel like the word dabble is so disrespectful to the spiritual realm and to yourself. Like mm. I wouldn't dabble in anything and nothing better dabble in me. Like <laughs> I need that commitment, that hundred percent. Because I want to vibrate high. So, like, my ears are really trained to hear hear the words that are, like, lukewarm. Mm. And I, I just, like, have to the react Bible. To, to fix Hotter it. The Bible. 
hot or cold, lukewarm, I spit you out. Bro. Yo. Ya tu sabes, la no, palabra. No, seriously. I, I'm like that too. Either be in or out. I'm okay if you're out. And it'd be great if we, you could be in, like do this together with me. And I'm okay if you don't want to do it. But don't be one foot in, one foot out. I hate, I, I hate that shit. I hate like when people say, "Let me try." I'm like, I can't no, stand that. Learn it. <laughs> I don't. I don't say There's try. No try. Like, oh, I'll try. I don't believe in that. Since I was 12, I knew that. Like my family was like. Oh, there's a lot of mental illness in this family. I'm like, well, what about mind over matter? How about you just work out? I've been preaching to them since I was 12, like, because mm -hmm. I have a lot of inward knowledge. It's not even things that I read, because you know that detox you did and and while yeah. you were like detained for five months, I choose to do that on my own, like a lot. That's good. Like I just do it That's because really I'm so grounded. That I just I just know when it's time and I know what you're supposed to. Right. I, I know that like fasting is a part of. Um, growing mm. like you become so much more powerful when you fast like if you fast it's really it's it's hard to fold yeah you can't tempt me with something if i'm used to not if i i don't need i, I lived without that right I, i could fast for 10 days you can't even you can't even you know you can't like even convince me with food or or money or anything because of my like skills in fasting i'm already so okay without it that You know, you can't really convince me mm. with something I don't want. Like, I, it's fasting is awesome. You're going to gain so much power in that. And then while you're fasting, you're detoxing. Like, your body goes into ketosis. And while your your digestive system shuts down, um, you're constantly detoxing and digesting. But once your digestive system shut down, then that detoxing is happening, like, even faster. And it really detoxifies your mind. And you might wonder like an answer to something and get that answer while you're detoxing that's happened to me when i was fasting off of food i got a lot of answers that's fine. very spiritual very amazing very high vibrating i've been meaning to do a three-day fast for i did for it for long. 10 and i did water and i'm thin but i lost 10 pounds if you want advice on that i can't because you can't break that fast with solid food either like you got to be careful your body can go in shock so what do you like eat soup for a few days no um the my first The way I broke my my fast, uh, you, you can't chew gum either. You cannot. What? No, nothing that is going to put a taste on your taste buds because Damn. as soon as you wake your taste buds up, it's like knocking on the door. You know, you can't wow. do that. It's all water. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. So just so, so you know. You do? So to break the fast, I juiced greens. Okay. Just greens, and I felt a nice and flush. You could. Feel the vegetable in your veins because your body hasn't had food for 10 days. So you can feel what's happening. So cool. Mm. And then the next day I did like green leafy vegetables, no dressing, no salt. But you ate them. You didn't blend Just them. You didn't. A little bit of vinegar and oil. Um, I didn't blend them the second day because the second day you want to put a, something a little something hard. Something solid. But no carbs. So no fruits. Just mm. like the, the, the. Just like spinach and lettuce and that kind of stuff. And stuff like that. And like green pepper. And celery, whatever. Yeah, you could do celery, yeah. And then what about the third day? Uh, the third day, you can move on to a smoothie. You just want to do it gently and like gradually. Like some, fruits? A little heavier. Yeah, like you could go a little heavier on the third day. When with can you fruits. eat a solid meal? Like the fifth or sixth day? Yeah, as long as it's um, lightly seasoned. Don't go back to just eating potato. Just go protein and like kale, protein mm. and spinach. So you can't go back to carbs for how long? Um, it I mean... I would wait like five days mm. to seven days, like a week. Mm. If you don't, if you want to still keep the benefits, because you, if you lose, you'll lose 10 pounds if you do 10 days. I mean, funny, and you'll gain it right back if you break that yeah, fast the wrong way. So funny enough, I, I cut out carbs two and a half weeks ago. And in the first two weeks, I lost 11 pounds. Oh, wow. Congrats. Just cut out carbs. I mean, I have abs forever because of the way I eat. And I have like chiseled arms. And people are like, damn, you work like out. To I'm give like, you, it's just a kitchen. I'd like to give you a, a like, The best compliment I think I could give you. You have the sexiest stomach I've ever seen on a woman. You already gave me the best compliment is when you said I'm interesting. You are? Like when I when I hear that, I'm like, oh my God, I'm winning. That's what makes you're, me feel you're like you're super interesting. And and in the age of like the ba the basic bitch, that's that's really cool to find a because there's so many pretty young women out there that say, Hey, I'm pretty. And it's like, so who gives a shit? What else about you know what I mean? I think I'm funny looking, but like I make it work for me. <laughs> no, you're, you're. I've been compared to nice. a lot of people. Like I, I've heard, oh, you look like Maya. 
Oh, sometimes you resemble Jay. Oh shit, you do look I've, like mine. I've heard a list of names. I mean, I've heard Uma Thurman. I've heard Fuck, you do look like Uma Thurman. I've heard That's crazy. uh who else have I heard? So many people, but I think I resemble Howard Stern. <laughs> when my hair is curly and my bangs are curly. <laughs> and then with my personality. That's like he's awesome. my spirit animal. That's dope. Nah. You know, like I'm a perverted Cuban too. You know how it is. You know how it is. You know, like we lit. We grew up on perverted jokes. I started when I was eight, for sure. And now I'm like this forever. The set. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, we're done. This now. was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Super fun. I could talk all day. Um, I always end, end my podcast asking three questions. So. Oh Lord. First question. Is this like last call? The last call? <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> Hold on. I got you. Last call. Bye. Question number one. Question number one. What inspires you? Good things. Um, when I see someone who had a really hard time get through it, that really inspires me. Because I struggle, and people don't think I struggle. Everybody thinks I do it easy. But I just, I just, I make things look like I don't have a problem. Um, so when I see someone that's been through it and they succeed, like, because I, I need those stories so I can keep going. Because mm. it's just not easy for me. I, I don't relate to the girls that get the bag using the guys. Like, I kind of hustled and helped my brothers eat when I was growing up. You know, I could have dated for, for, for food and I, I didn't do that. I, like, really, I had, like, two or three jobs. I held it down that way. And I helped a lot of my friends, too. I helped them get jobs. So helping other people and, like, just doing good. Another thing that inspires me is if somebody does something bad to another person and, and they don't pay that karma forward, like they just stand strong in their stuff and I see them do well, that really inspires me to continue to be a good person. I like that. So something that pretty pretty crazy that I learned in prison is um, you get treated like dog shit. You get, you're, you're, it's your subhuman, like prison guards and that whole system, they treat you pretty bad. And that taught me to never treat anybody else like that. Yeah. For the, as long as I live, Nelson Rodriguez will never dehumanize another person. Yeah, my childhood taught me that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just taught me to have, have compassion for other people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. It's, it's cool how what you think is like the worst experience you could imagine can actually teach you a very valuable lesson that will make you a better human being. Honestly, know? I'm like, wow, I don't have a... There's no price on my soul. I'm like, wow, I really am a good person. I'm not going to ever stoop to that level, even though, like, this person did all this stuff to me. I'm like, I look at myself and I'm like, wow. Like, I'm proud of myself for, for not paying that bad karma forward. Mm -hmm. And you know what actually ends up happening when you don't do anything to the next person? It goes right back to the person that messed with you times 10. And then you'll get that phone call. Like, it's so dope. You'll even... The information will come to you. You don't even have to search to see if they're getting their karma. Somebody's mm. going to call you like, did you hear what happened? I'm like, wow. It's because I didn't pay the bad karma forward. It's, it's got to go right back. Mm. I've seen that. I think that's law. I think yeah, that's law. It is law. 100%. For sure. Second question. What's next for you? I, DJing. So I really, my goal for my birthday is to throw a birthday bash, like a tourist birthday bash on a yacht. And if I can do that every month for every Zodiac sign on a boat, I will. That's awesome. And I'll DJ it. And I'll make it very special. Are you an April Taurus or a May Taurus? <laughs> I'm a May Taurus. May, what day? May 1st. Interesting. I have a stepsister that was born today. And I was born two months after Happy her. birthday, stepsister. Yeah, so my sister got two, two sisters like within two months. That's cool. Yeah, but I'm May a May first. first Taurus. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Natural born preacher. That's what 19 Keys says. Taurus mm. is on natural born preachers. And it's because of the Taurus shape. Right, right. It's, honestly, I think it it goes together. That's dope. Somebody just bought me um, a star in my constellation. It's mm. registered. I have a deed and everything. That is... Yeah. That I, is the coolest I cried. gift. I cried. That is the coolest gift anybody... I, was, wow. I cried like the boogers coming down, that type of cry. That's how hard I cried. You got a star in the fucking sky, girl. Yeah, I do. In my yo. constellation. It's up there. It's Fuck, called Lestat Laveau. It's not on the Walk of Fame. Fuck. It's up in the sky. Bro, 
That's what we're on the same. We're on the same. I was about to say fuck a fuck a star in L. A. It jumped in my head. You have a star in the sky. I do. That's eternal, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, That's forever. I want this shit forever, man. You know what I mean? Shine bright like a diamond. Last question. How, yeah. do, you, how do you want to be remembered when you die? Damn. How do I want to be remembered? After you're gone. As someone that made like an impact and like changed the world for a better place, because right now, when you're scrolling, you just hear the cries and the voices of so many people in agony and pain. And I, I think music can heal that because music is the reason it happened anyways and social media is the reason it happened anyways. And like I said, anything you do that's positive is gonna make this reality like 10% more positive. So if I could in, inspire like at least, at least 20 million people to be on that wave and like, like stand their ground with it, I think this world could change like hardcore. Like that's a huge wave of positivity going out there. And maybe people will start asking more important questions and get off of the dumb questions because our evolution lies behind the important questions. The, the questions are what's gonna shape us. Mm. The right questions, not these stupid ones, like the right ones. Because there's an answer out there that can solve some things and, and it's, in, it's sitting in someone's head. It's somewhere out there sitting in someone's head. So we have to ask the question, whatever that question is. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of the question you do ask. So if your life is a bit dull or boring, you should ask yourself, what, what kind of questions are you asking others? Your life might be exciting, but ridiculous. Mm. You might be making money, but on some stupid shit. Mm. You know, on some something stupid. Right. Because, like, there's some people gaining money, and we would... We're not, we wouldn't, we'd be better without y'all doing what you're doing. Like, does that make sense? Have you seen the, um, the NPCs on TikTok? You know what that is? It's a non-playable character. It's basically where, like, a non-playable character in a video game is, yeah, 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 exactly. Yes, yes, yes. So, so yes. So, they're going on live, on TikTok live. Mine would be cafecito, cafecito. <laughs> dale, <laughs> dale. They're <laughs> they're going on TikTok live and they're just doing the wild. This dude dresses up like a hot dog and he's pretending to give a blowjob. I swear to God, the glizzy. Yo, Damn. he saw it. He knows the what I'm talking on about. The glizzy, bro. And he's getting paid eight thousand dollars on a TikTok live to do that. I was on that, and I bet, bro. and no one's saying nothing about him. But OnlyFans is horrible. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm not on that. I'm just saying. Uh, you do what you want. I'm not on there. Neither are my feet. <laughs> I wouldn't judge you if your feet... I wouldn't judge you if, if you were on there at I, all. If but. I went on there, I would just be cooking. Because there's a lot of people doing, like, cooking on there and different things. I mean, yeah, a lot of women use it for, like, erotic purposes, but there's non... There's just normal stuff on there, too, yeah. Yeah. We should totally retire that. Some of those women are, like, brilliant marketing experts, and if they got behind some artists, they wouldn't have to lower themselves, but they don't want to share nothing with nobody, you know? Like, mm. take that marketing... Uh, ambition and, and experience and put it behind an artist. Collaborate with someone that's not doing that. Mm. And now you're both making money and nobody's lowering themselves. I'm just saying. Mm. Maybe I'm crazy. Hey. But that's my thought on that. This, these women, they're not useless. They're just really using their energy in the wrong place. But marketing mm. experts. For like 21-year-olds sure. with a million followers, like you're consistent. Yeah, for sure. So, Lisette, how can people connect with you? You can connect with me on Instagram at Lisette Laveau, L-A-V-O-E, and Lisette is spelled L-I-S-E-T-T-E, Lisette Laveau. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Another episode of Montana Method Podcast, your special host, Nelson Rodriguez Jr., special guest, Lisette Laveau. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. I'm going to buy you lunch. We're going to eat and do a cafecito right now? Sounds good. <laughs> Tú no quieres café, pero yo sí. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. As always, push it to the limit. The world is yours. God bless. If you're not chasing a dream, life is meaningless. Say goodnight to the bad guy. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Yeah. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. Yeah. I'ma do it, came from rags to riches yeah.
rags to riches, came from rags to riches, rags.